Welcome to Tree Scholar. My name is Tree Jaxi, and today I'm going to teach you how to use Google Picasa to organize, edit, and share your photos. Now there's a lot of different image editing software out there, and I like Google Picasa because it's free, it's easy to use, and it's ideal for photo editing. There are more powerful tools out there, such as Photoshop, which is an industry standard for graphic arts. It's, there is an online version that's free, but is very limited. And while Adobe is uh, integrated to all the other Adobe suite, it's a very expensive, even if you can get an educator's discount. There's also an Adobe Photoshop alternative that's open source called GIMP. It's also free, and it can run on Linux and on Windows. And I'll teach classes on those two programs another day. Now let's get started with Picasa. First, you will need to download Picasa at picasa.google.com, or you can search Picasa on the Google search engine, and it will be the first response. When you download Picasa, it's a 14 megabyte file, so it's very small, and it's a rather quick install. I've already uh, installed most of it, so I will finish, and uh, we will launch this here. When you launch uh, Picasa the first time, it's going to ask you where you would like to scan the pictures from. Do you want to scan them from my documents, my pictures, and the desktop? Or do you want to search the whole computer for pictures? Now if you have a lot of pictures, this import process does take a lot of time. And so I'm going to select my pictures uh, where I just have a few folders. And I'll click continue. Uh, next Picasa will ask if I want to associate all the different picture file types with the program and I do so I'm gonna leave those selected and say finish you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner there is this little import uh, feature where it's showing all the pictures that are on my drive or it's importing and on the left hand side we have this uh, folder view where it's showing the folders that all the pictures are in the first thing I like to do is go up to view go down to folder view and change this to tree view what this does is uh, change the folder view to look like your hard drive so if you know where you are saving your files it is a lot easier to find them you'll notice one nice thing is I can actually scroll through all the pictures that are on here all at once making it really easy to uh, see what I have um, and access the different uh, pictures now if I want to get into the image editor I just need to double click on a picture so let's scroll down here and for instance double click and it will zoom me right into the image and it will give me all these options on the left hand side to edit my pictures now before I start editing pictures I want to show you about loading now I took about 20 pictures on my camera here in the last few days and I am going to insert my little SD memory card into my card reader which will cause Windows to pull up the dialog box to import the files if you're using Windows Vista or Windows 7, you'll have a, a different box here with a little different uh, options, but it's uh, relatively the same. I'm going to select Copy Pictures to Your Computer using Picasa. And if you check this box that says Always Do This Selected Action, it will always try to import with Picasa. So I will click OK. Now it's showing me all the pictures that are on this SD card. The ones with the red X's have already been imported onto my computer and anything that does not have a red X has not been imported. So I say I have some pictures that I know are not on there yet, such as these ones, and I can just uh, deselect the red X and it will pull them up. Uh, since I have uh, practiced recording this class, it's already imported a few of these. Uh, at the bottom it asks me where I want to import these pictures to. I can either import it to my pictures or I can choose another folder. And in this case I'm going to leave it in my pictures and it asks what I want to name this folder. I like to name my folders after the date I imported them as I usually know when I took the pictures and I usually want the pictures that I most recently took. And then after copying it's asking if I want to leave the card alone or if I'm going to delete the pictures or delete everything on the card. Uh, I'm going to leave the card alone this time. I'm going to click import all. Again the little import uh, dialog is going to pop up over here on the side as it imports my pictures and once it has imported all the pictures from the card it will show the folder over here on the left hand side so we'll give that just a second and it will pop up that folder and again I can I can easily scroll through either by clicking on them or by arrowing up and down or by using the uh, little uh, scroll bar here on the side alright so I just imported to 
125. Now, uh, again, to edit a picture, I just need to double click on that image. And so we'll start with this first one. And here on the left hand side, we have all my options to edit the picture. The first option being crop. Uh, cropping, of course, is to cut out anything I don't want. Maybe I don't want this ladder here, and I just want to crop my uh, the leg to this cart here that was sitting upside down. And I can apply it. Now, one problem with cropping in a weird uh, shape like this is if I want to print this out into a photo, say at Walgreens or Walmart or some photo processing, they're going to crop it down to a 4 inch by 6 inch ratio. And usually it's going to crop it strange, not the way you want it. So let me undo this and show you how to crop a photo so that it will be easy to print out at a uh, photo printer. I like to use 4x6 prints because you can get them really cheap, uh, down to 10 to 20 cents at some locations. And when I click over here and drag it, you'll see it sticks to the 4x6 shape. And I'm going to stretch this out. Again, I don't, I don't want that uh, ladder in the background, so I'm just going to crop this down and click Apply. Now, say I want to straighten this image. My, my uh, leg there is a little bit crooked, so I can click Straighten and move this little bar to straighten it out however I like, trying to line it up with the grid on the screen. And then I will click Apply. If this was a portrait with red eye, I could click red eye and it will automatically remove uh, the red eye that comes from flashes, or I could manually even select red eye if there's multiple people that have that problem. <coughs> uh, Picasso has I'm feeling lucky, much like the Google search engine does, and just like Google search, it just does what it feels like, what it thinks is best. In this case, it blows out the picture. Uh, it's not how I like, I don't think it's perfect, I could make this better manually. So I will show you how to do that in a moment. It also has auto contrast and auto color, which is very similar to I'm feeling lucky, but specifically for contrast or for color. Now retouch is probably my favorite tool on this bar because it allows me to remove blemishes from people's faces. I can remove blotches from the background or spots on the wall. And I will show you how to use this real quick. Now. It, the default brush size is pretty good. You'll see the tiny little uh, uh, spot. I can stretch this out so it's a lot bigger. And what I'll do is I will go and find a spot that I want to remove. Say this little black spot here. I can click on that and notice it immediately disappears. I can actually move my cursor around so it will blend with whatever I select. And I'm gonna, I want to white these out so I'm going to select white space. So we can just get rid of these little black blotches here. And uh, say this is a blemish uh, on somebody's face or uh, something else really small I want to uh, remove. I can use this little zoom slider here to zoom in on my picture to the full size. And holding down the space bar will allow me to move the picture around. I'll let go of the space bar. It will go back to my uh, little tool. And say I want to remove this little rust spot. I can actually go in here and select that. And again, I'll move my cursor around see what I want to blend with, see if it looks good. There we go. And uh, here's another little blotch maybe I want to remove. And I can remove uh, as much as I want. When I'm done, I will click Apply, and it will actually save those changes. Depending on how much I changed, it will uh, take more or less time. Uh, if I wanted to add text to this photo, I could just click Text. I can add uh, wherever I want it. Say I want to put a, a cart leg and I can actually move that around, I can rotate it um, however however you want to do. I personally don't like to put text on my images so I'm going to cancel this. Uh, Edit and Picnic allows you to put uh, clip art and, and uh, stars and, and goofy little things on there. I don't like to use Picnic too much. Um, I like to keep my photos uh, pure. <laughs> and if I want to adjust the light real quick I can use this little fill light slider Again, it's, it's uh, not too specific, so it will kind of wash out your picture. And there is a lot more uh, control if you use the next tab up here. It's fine tuning of lighting and shadows. Again, there's my fill light bar, so I can actually move up the fill light. But I also have shadows, so I can increase the contrast by moving fill light up and shadow up. And you'll notice it really makes this image pop more. Uh, you'll also notice I did not use highlights, and what highlights does is it really brings out the whites. 
So here it's bringing out the whites, but it does not actually lighten the picture. And if you use it too much, it will completely wash out your picture. So I uh, try not to use highlights too much. I mostly use fill light and shadows. I might use highlight just to make my whites a little wider and brighter and the shadows to bring out more contrast. Now if this uh, picture was taken and the color is off a bit, maybe my uh, snow is blue, I can actually adjust the color temperature until the snow is white or until my rust is the proper color. You'll notice if I move to the left, snow turns blue. If we move to the right, it turns kind of a reddish color. So in this case, my camera actually did uh, a good job at capturing the color. If uh, this picture was way off, I can actually use the neutral color picture picker, which allows me to select the whites or the grays, and it will automatically adjust the photo. It's not the uh, most exact tool, but it does help in a pinch. Now if you go to the third tab, these are actually some of the simple effects, such as sharpen, sepia, which turns this kind of in an old-fashioned photo, black and white, warmify, which will kind of bring out the reds a little more, especially good for skin tones, film grain, which will make this photo look like I took it on an old-fashioned, uh, like, 35 millimeter camera, uh, tint, adding a little bit of tint, depending on which color you want. Saturation is really one of my favorites on this tool, as usually I find that my camera does not bring out the colors enough. Uh, you want to be careful with this because if you turn it up too much it will make your picture uh, unrealistic and if you have blues it will really blow out the blues. Uh, if I turn it the other way I can actually turn this to black and white or remove some of the color. Maybe I don't want it to be so brightly colored. I am a big fan of color so I like to turn this up just a little bit and click apply. Uh, we have a couple other great features like soft focus. You'll notice this uh, will blur out everything except for wherever I put my cursor. So maybe I want you to focus on this wheel and I don't want you to look at the leg of this cart. And I can change the size of the uh, focus or I can change how much it's blurred out. If I turn this down it's not quite as blurry. Turn it up it's very blurry. It's a good way to draw the eye to specifically what you want. Glow is a great feature for snow, or if you want to make uh, something look kind of ghostly um, or have an aura around it. I like it for snow because snow does glow, and you'll see how it really brought the snow out. Um, again, it can kind of wash out your picture if you're not careful, so you can adjust the intensity of it um, and, and how uh, big the radius is of the glow. So I'll leave that and apply it. Uh, next we have filtered black and white. This just allows you to do black and white, but different colors. So really I could do uh, like a blue and white, or a blue and black, and uh, adjust the tint of it. It really just a more specific tint. Focal black and white is a lot like soft focus, except for it allows me to turn everything black and white, except for where I put my cursor. So maybe I want to draw your eye up to the colors on the wheel. And again, I don't want you to be focusing so much on the leg down here. Or maybe I want you to focus on the, the color of the leg and not so much uh, of the wheel. I'm going to cancel out of that one. And the last feature on here is graduated tint. As it says, it's very useful for skies. I like to use it for landscape pictures where if I take pictures of a landscape, the mountains in the distance are often washed out by the sky and will be really light while everything close up is very dark. Graduate tint is nice because I can shade the things in the distance and really make those mountains in the distance um, the same uh, contrast or same darkness as the things that are up close. Uh, if I move the feathering to the left, you can see the line right where the shade starts and stops. Again, I can actually move where that shade starts and stops. And if I move feather to the right, you can't even tell where my gradient begins and ends and makes it much smoother. So in most cases you're going to want the feathering um, over to the right. I'm going to cancel that out and we'll move to the next tab. Uh, these last two tabs are a little more artistic effects that you can do. A lot of people like the HDR um, where it really brings out the colors and the details of things, although a bit unrealistic. So personally I am not a huge fan of HDR and you'll see after it's done refining, it's really brought out a lot more of the uh, color and the details and the edges. And uh, I, 
Again, I think it looks very unrealistic. I'm not a big fan of HDR, but in some cases it looks really nice. Um, and then the last one again has even more artsy effects where, say if I apply neon, this will turn a practically into a painting uh, where I could print it out and hang it on a gallery wall. <laughs> and it looks really cool, but again, uh, if you want to keep your picture realistic, um, I don't touch these last two effects too much. Okay, so moving on out of editing, I would like to show you about exporting. Now usually I am uploading, uh, uh, I'm taking 20, 30, 100, 200 pictures and I want to upload my favorites to Facebook. So I will load them up quickly and I will want to go through and edit them quickly, crop them down to what I want. So, you know, so I will just do some quick editing here and show you. So we'll apply that crop. Again, I like to bring out the shadows, bring in a little fill light, and I like to add some saturation, bring out the colors. Another good one. We'll add a little shadows, a little fill light. Again, bring up the colors. Let's see. I really like this picture here, so um, I'll show you. It's kind of a uh, dull picture to begin with, but if I boost the shadows, I boost the lighting a little bit, the contrast really boosts. And then with the colors, I can really bring out the oranges and the reds and the purples. Again, I will click Apply. Now, um, in the bottom left-hand side, you'll notice it says Selection here. <coughs> selection, these are all the pictures that I have selected. And on the side of the selection bar, we have a tack to hold selected items. So I'm going to use the left and right arrow, scan through my pictures, find the ones I like. I like this one. I like this picture, so I'll tack that. There's another one I'll tack. Push the tack on that one as well. So here I have a handful of pictures I like. And, uh, say I, I want to remove some of these from my selection. I don't wait. Maybe I don't really want this one. I can select the picture here and click the next little icon, which says Clear Items from Selection. It will actually pull it out of that. So now I just have the uh, six pictures that I want. And if I use the third icon, I can actually move it to a separate album. So say name a new album and call it a class and you'll notice up here there's an album folder and there's Picasso class I just created now I can actually drag and drop more pictures up to that if I want maybe I want to add more to my little album and this really groups them together without me having to move the files the files are still located in their folders where they were originally but Picasso has grouped them under some albums and that's one great thing about Picasa. It allows you to group things together without having to move the files and rename the files um, or uh, do other manual manipulations of the files. Some other great things you can do with that is uh, I'm going to export it. I'm going to export this so I can share it. Now Picasa has an online um, <coughs> folder that you can share it to which has now been integrated into Google+. So when I click share I'm already logged into Google, so it's actually going to start uploading these and ask me what folder do I want to put them in. And here's all the different folders I've created over the years, and I'm just going to leave this one in the Picasso class folder, and I'll click Upload. Now it's going to have a little loading bar here as it will uh, gradually upload these, fo these photos. But once it's done, it will give me the option to view these on Google+, and so I will show you that here in a second. Once this has been shared out to Picasso Google+, I can then share it elsewhere. I can share it with my friends, or send it to Facebook, or uh, share it on other social networks, which is a, a really nice, quick way to, to uh, upload these images. <coughs> All right, so I will click View Online. And it's actually going to open up my Google Plus account. And here's all those pictures I just uploaded. So uh, they're already out there, and um, I can click Share Album if I want to share this so everybody can see it. Otherwise, you can see it says Visible Only to Me. Now, over on Google Plus, I can click Your Albums. And this is showing every album that I've uploaded. And here you can see the uh, previous practice classes I did with the same pictures, as well as pictures I've uploaded over the last few years. So everything's all nicely organized and online. None of this stuff is on my computer. This is already out there on the internet. Some of them are shared and some of them are private. You can 
can see the little uh, not symbol here showing that I have not shared these folders. Okay, now I want to move on to tagging people. Now Picasa has a feature built in similar to Facebook where I can tag different users so or different people that I have captured. So I'll go in here, here's a picture of me baking some bread and I can click on the people panel and notice it's already tagged me so let's go to one that I am not tagged. Here we go. I can click add a person manually move my little box up to my face, go down here to type my name, there we go. Now why would I want these uh, all tagged with my name? Over on the left hand side you can see there's actually a little section called people and when I select tree there's every picture it has tagged of me. An interesting thing about Picasa is it automatically scans faces to see any faces that are similar. Now here's uh, different faces it's pulled out of pictures and I can name these people. I, I don't know who this guy is, so I'm just going to name him uh, say John Smith. And I will hit enter, and it will say, oh, John Smith, I don't have that person. So I'll click New Person, and I'll click OK. And notice automatically it created a new folder over here for John Smith. And if I had more pictures of this guy, it would try to identify. It would pull more pictures in here and ask me, are these all the same person? Anybody who's not named will be up in the unnamed section or will be in the unknown person where I could actually right click, edit people album, and put this person's name. I'll just put person, click OK. And you can see these aren't the same people, so I could actually go in here and say move to new person and uh, another person. <laughs> And this way you can group all of the people together, maybe your friends or your family. Um, you can quickly access all the pictures you have of them. Now what can you do with that? Well, there's a lot of really cool features they added in here where I can make a slideshow. Maybe I just want to flip through and show you the pictures in full screen. Maybe I want to make a uh, photo collage where I can take all these pictures and combine them into one, one big picture. I can layer all these goofy pictures of myself, I can rotate them, I can uh, bring them to the front or the back, I'll bring it to the top, I can rotate them, I can resize it. Uh, it's uh, really great if you take a lot of pictures, say, of an event, like a sporting event or a social event. You may not want to share 200 pictures with your friends, but you could take your favorite ones, combine them all into one picture, and then just share that one. Some other cool features is uh, you can <clears throat> make videos where here's an actual movie presentation, much like a slideshow, uh, but it's combining it all into one big video where I can show you all the pictures of me at once in a video format. Uh, they have another cool video feature where it will actually make a face movie. What this does is it resizes all the pictures I have of my face to the same size and it will group them together here it's photos taken in the last 24 hours. Nope, I want to say best transition. Now this is, I like this because uh, you'll notice, apply that, make a new one. There we go. Now when I hit play, I get my pictures together, it's my face, really my eyes, and uh, the angles of my face. It's real fun if I have uh, 200 pictures of myself, I can show you all of them in a matter of two minutes in a really uh, fun little video where it just kind of morphs one face into another. Now let's move on from uh, people tagging to objects. You can actually tag objects as well. Let's say we will go into here and I can tag this. In the bottom I showed you the people panel. Uh, we also have this one that says tags panel. Now this is the, a car, so maybe I want to tag every picture I have of a car. So I'm going to go through, and we know we have a couple more pictures of cars. It's not really a car, but I'm going to tag that as a car anyways. Notice in the quick tags, it's already remembered what the last one I did. So I can just select that, and it's added the tag here. And this one here, I'll add that tag as well. Um, I can tag multiple things. So here I have snow and I have footprints. So there I got two tags. Uh, in this way I can actually tag every object or person or item. 
I like to use it for dogs or for animals. I take a lot of pictures of birds and squirrels and deer, and I can tag them all separately. Or if they're all on the same picture, I can tag them all at the same time. Now why would I want to tag these? I will show you. I can type snow up here in the search, and there is the picture I just tagged with snow. Um, I can also go in here and tag let me tag a few more things. I'm going to tag this one with snow as well. Why don't we tag a couple of my pictures that have snow. Again, I'll click my quick tags. Here's another good one of snow. Now if I go back to my library, I can again search for snow, and here is every picture I have ever tagged with snow. So if I tag them all with dogs, every picture with dogs, I can make a collage just by typing dogs, and you'll see every picture I've taken of a dog, um, and I can find objects real quickly. Some other tags you can do is geotags. This allows you to uh, remember where did I take these pictures. It's all these recent pictures I took. Let me clear my search. These were all taken in Kimball, South Dakota. So if I do a search, it's integrated with Google Maps, and so it'll automatically pull up wherever I type in. And in this way, I can remember where I took these pictures, as this doesn't look any different than a barbecue pit in Colorado or in Russia, for that matter. And if I'm on a vacation, I might want to remember to take these pictures. So it's a nice way to add a little tag. Uh, to where these are at. And when you upload these to your Picasso album, it will also remember so other people can see, oh, this, this was uh, taken in Kimball, South Dakota. Interesting. The last little uh, button it has here is a properties panel. <coughs> properties is primarily for uh, photographers. If you want to see all the fine details of your photo, uh, it tells you the file size, its location, what kind of camera I took this on, the date and time, and then all the settings the camera used to take this picture. Uh, which again is really nice if you're a photographer, uh, you can recreate pictures or see exactly how this picture was taken and, and learn from your past pictures. Alright, uh, moving on. Now Picasso also does video editing. It's not a powerful video editor, but it does what most people need the most, which is to shorten the video down to the best parts. A lot of times, you only want a little piece of your video. In this case, I have here a video of a monkey at the zoo. And I'm going to actually pause this, and I can slide the little marker anywhere I want to the video. Say I just want a clip of this monkey. I don't want a clip of that first one. If I grab the little triangle here on the left-hand side, I can short in the beginning and you'll see it's kind of flowing through the video all the way up to, oh here we go, that's where I want to start it and if I grab the triangle on this end I can shorten the video you can see it kind of zoomed out and messed it up I just want a little clip, there we go now when I'm done I can click upload to YouTube and send this video straight to YouTube or I could click uh, export clip and send it to my computer in this way, uh, I can shorten this video really quickly and get it shared out to Facebook or Google Plus or YouTube or wherever I want to put this video. <clears throat> Another great thing I like about uh, the video editor is I can take snapshots. Now, snapshots are great for action, especially, say, if you're shooting a video of sports, you can get a snapshot of somebody in midair or the ball in midair or a very specific moment in time where there is a cool activity going on. And you can take a lot of snapshots. Let me uh, let me find a little good spot here. Say I want to capture all oh, this cute little monkey with his eyes open. I'll click snapshot. Of course, the snapshot's going to be the quality of your video. In this case, uh, I kind of use an this older video, uh, kind of pixelated. <clears throat> and I'm going to click on this, and you'll see here's that image I just took a snapshot of. I can show it in the full size, and again, I can edit it. And uh, it's a great way to impress people. Oops, kind of messing it up here. You can impress people with your ability to uh, capture moments in time where uh, nobody can take a picture of the basketball player in midair as he's doing his swish unless you have a real fancy fast camera. So I, I like being able to uh, capture those little special moments. 
So as I've shown you, um, Picasa is very easy to use. It's a, a quick, simple program. It's quite straightforward. They're constantly adding new features, uh, new things you can do. You can capture things straight from your webcam. Um, you can do a lot of other things up here, so uh, please play around with it. And uh, you can even make screen savers. You can create a CD or a poster um, and publish straight to bloggers, such as the blog you're currently watching this video on. Now, if you have any questions about Picasso or you want me to go into more detail, uh, please post a comment on my blog or uh, send me a question right through Blogger, and I will get back to you. Thank you for so much for watching my class, and uh, have a great day.